Mark, so we're asking everyone, just first of all, Manchester City's progression in Europe. How big an achievement was it to go through last night? Well, it was a great result. Um, but the last two results, obviously, they've, they've probably done it in a different way from how they anticipated or hoped. But uh, two great performances, uh, great results, certainly. And uh, yeah, it's always good that uh, British clubs are progressing. <coughs> well, I don't know about that. There's some very strong clubs still uh, still involved. And uh, um, I think they, they'll probably be pleased as a club that they, they seem to have been uh, progressing in terms of showing mental fortitude and and, and understanding what's required in, in group games in Champions Leagues now in the last two games. So that will that will sustain them moving forward, I'm sure. Squad-wise, how are you this weekend? Uh, we've got a doubt over Mark Muniesa. Um, got a hamstring, did, didn't complete the game last week, so uh, he's a major doubt. Um, John, John Walters, a little bit sore in his knee, so we're managing that. Um, unless I've forgotten somebody, I think everybody else is, is OK. So this week, Ryan Shawcross said that he no longer looks out for his name to be on an, an England squad list. What does he have to do to get an England call to get a return to that squad? Well, uh, we've all had a view on this. and. Um, um, Thankfully, Roy came to the game at the weekend against Arsenal, and he would have once again seen a good performance from Ryan. So he's he's seen Ryan in real time, so to speak. So I think that that will help his case. He hadn't been here before, I don't think. So uh, uh, he's been able to see Ryan <coughs> in a high-profile game in which he acquitted himself really, really well. So um, from our point of view, he really can't do any more. He's He's an accomplished Premier League player who's been playing well for a long, long time, um, and he's an option. Um, and if if he became an option again for England, he wouldn't let anybody down. I'm, I'm convinced of that. What is it that gives you that belief as well, and that you can easily step into the international stage, onto the international stage, and do himself justice at that level regularly? Well, I've worked with him for a decent amount of time now, and I see him every day, and um, um, I think his his development has has progressed year on year and I think uh, his ability um, he's not maybe the player that people thought he was and maybe people question his ability on the ball and uh, his distribution from the back but that's improved as, a, as I always felt he would having seen him play and seen him train I knew he had the capability of, of getting on the ball at the back and uh, stand attacks from from the defensive third, and that's what he's been very accomplished at. And I think that's a part of his game that maybe people don't expect him to be able to be, able to be accomplished at, but he certainly is. Now we see speculation that Roma are interested in him. What do you make of that? Well, that happens when you, when you beat one of the top six, I think. Um, <laughs> High-profile games, and if you play well, then people start start to talk to you about you in, in different terms, maybe. And uh, that's all we think that is. Um, He's a good player. Uh, good players attract attention. Whether or not there's any substance to it, uh, I'm not too sure. But uh, we're coming into the silly season very shortly, so uh, that's what happens this time of the year. He's not the only one, of course. Yeah, because Zonzi linked with Napoli, Begovic with Real Madrid. Not for sale across the board, is it? No, absolutely. We uh, we're very happy with what we got. We don't have to sell sell anybody. Um, Premier League is. The strongest league in world football, in my view. So why would you want to leave it unless it was for one of the the super clubs? Um, so any other clubs, I think um, you have to go some to to beat the Premier League and, and what we can offer players as well in terms of facilities and, and environment. Um, Money-wise, we may may not be able to offer as much, but uh, you've got to give up a lot here if you if you want to improve your status as a football. Um, I think Charlie's a little bit frustrated because he hasn't started games, but he's getting game time. I think um, I think he's started about six or seven games um, and played or come in and taken part in, in seven others. So we've only played 15 games, so he's he's had quite a, quite a bit of game time. I know I know why he's frustrated is because he hasn't started games, and that's that's understandable. I when one plays. Uh, happy with not being in the team, um, but Charlie wears his heart on his sleeve and, and he wants to play, and, uh, and that's probably where that's come from. But um, 
no, we've, we're happy with Charlie and what he's producing. He always has an impact when he comes on. So uh, um, I can understand his frustration because he, um, he wants to play from the start of games. But uh, uh, we've been doing OK of late, so we, he's, he'll have to be patient like many others. For you, does the frustration come when you beat Spurs, you then lose to Burnley, beat City, lose to Leicester, beat Newcastle, lose to Sunderland? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, we've talked about that at length after the games that you've mentioned, and uh, we haven't been able to overcome that. So it's another opportunity, great performance, great result against Arsenal. Now we have to back it up with, with another good performance and hopefully a similar result because it won't be easy. Crystal Palace playing well at the moment. It's a good performance last time out against Tottenham. We created a lot of problems for them. Uh, will always be difficult at home as well. So they're in decent form. So it's, it's not an easy fixture by any stretch of the imagination. So if we are going to get back-to-back -back wins, we'll, we'll have to go some. Does that kind of run act as a warning sign or, or does it in some respects play on players' mind, play on your own mind going into a game like this? I don't think it plays on our, on our mind. I think we can use it where we are now, we can use it as a motivation that we can't allow it to happen again. We've, we've allowed it too many times up to this point, so I think it's something that we can talk about and, and try and put right. So it's not as if it's a, a mindset at the moment and something that we can't shift. Uh, we do that by uh, playing well and, and getting that run and that trend out of our play. And if, uh, if we play as well as we, we did against Arsenal, then, then we've got a great opportunity to do that. Back-to-back -back wins in the Premier League is is huge and we haven't been able to manage it yet, which surprises us and I think it surprises a lot of people because um, we, we've played, for the most part, uh, a decent level of football in most of the games we've played. It's just that we haven't been able to get those back-to-back -back results that we're looking for. You say that you're in a false position on this in the Premier League? I think a number of clubs can look at their seasons up to this point. It's, I've spoke before about the international breaks and how that stop-starts teams and I think maybe uh, that's affected ourselves certainly, um, and uh, I would suggest it probably affected other clubs as well. A little number of clubs will look back and think, well, maybe we should have got points there and uh, should have got a win <coughs> elsewhere. And, and I think a lot of clubs, looking at the table as we stand, will we'll think in a similar way. Side issue perhaps as well, you're expecting a bit of attention on yourself and Neil Warnock on the touchline this weekend? Not particularly. Why? Just, there's been a little bit, obviously, of the comments to make when. Um, well, well, Neil sometimes makes comments that you know will get reported, and so that, that's how I took it. I took a real pinch of salt. Uh, um, I could reply to it, but there's no point. Um, it's. I don't have a view on that statement. Well, I do have a view, but I'll keep it to myself, to be perfectly honest. But uh, no, I mean, it's uh, Neil's, Neil's out there and he's, he's full of the right character and uh, he says what he feels and that's fine by me. But uh, he's not always right, as we know. Yeah, how impressed were you at the weekend with the growing stature of Bojan and his link-up play with Crash? And how effective could that partnership be for the rest of the season? We're really pleased with... What well, Bojan's producing at the moment, and I said after the game, I think since he's come back in the team, arguably he's, he's been our best performer in every game he's played, and that's that's credit to him. Um, he had to go, came into the team, had to go out because uh, his levels weren't quite where they needed to be to be effective for us. But um, but he's worked hard, he's he's listened, um, he's understood what's required, and and when he came back in, I, I knew he was ready. Um, I don't think I can claim to know that he would perform at the level straight away and be as consistent as he has been since he's come back in the side. But certainly there was a better chance because we, we knew how hard he'd worked and uh, and we all felt that he was ready. He's had a lot of clubs for a 24-year-old, but mm -hmm. you can see the other players get on with him really well and you saw that after the goal celebrations. And do you think he's feeling now settled, settled here at the time? Yeah, I think that's what he was looking for. Um, he didn't come here asking for a 12-month contract and have a look and see if he liked the place or not. He, he made a big commitment, a uh, long-term contract, and uh, I think he needed that stability and he wanted to stay here and be effective in the Premier League and be effective for us. And um, that's what he's showing. It's still early days. He's only had really five, six games of note where he's uh, been consistently at the level that he needs to be. But um, 
the way he's playing at the moment, we're really encouraged by it. Um, he's enjoying his his work on a daily basis, um, playing with a smile on his face. Uh, his teammates understand what he can give them, but um, he helps them as well in terms of his work ethic and, and his approach to the game. And he's a good kid, um, so we're really pleased he's here. Well, Vinny alluded to it earlier on about the sort of bad atmosphere at Selhurst Park. It's, uh, it, it's going to be a tough one. It's going to be what would be called a Stoke home game not so long ago. Yeah, they're a great atmosphere down there. They're a very difficult place as a player. I always found that it was a difficult place to go and get a positive result. So yeah, it's it's not changed since I've become a manager. And uh, um, the last couple of years since they got back in the Premier League, the the atmosphere fear seems to have gone up a notch. Um, and that can happen. Uh, I think so that certainly happened when when we got back into the Premier League. And uh, that atmosphere is important. Uh, we get the benefits of it uh, here. At the Britannia, and and when you need their their help, it seems to be that uh, the Palace fans can get behind their team and affect their team, and uh, I think that should be encouraged. I think it's great to play in those atmospheres. Thank you, Mark. Uh, going back 12 months uh, to um, an iconic win against uh, Chelsea by three goals to two, come forward 12 months mm -hmm. later, and uh, almost to the day, another iconic 3-2 win against the top side. Um, do you hope that's going to kickstart the season into uh, pushing you into the top ten? Well, that's where we feel we should be, but there's no God-given right to to be in the top ten unless you, you win games. And we had a good performance, good result last weekend. Uh, we've obviously, just gone through the frustration we feel that we haven't been able to get back-to-back -back wins, but uh, there's an opportunity against Palace, uh, and we can do that. Uh, I think once. We we get through this period over Christmas. I think we'll we'll be comfortable, and and e more comfortable in terms of where we feel the the season is going. Uh, I think there's good opportunities for us. It's a difficult period, but uh, I think a lot of clubs are, are looking at their fixture list and thinking the same for whatever reason. I think the computers uh, produced. Uh, big periods of difficult games for any number of clubs this year for, for whatever reason um, and we're in the middle of our run but um, having gone up against Arsenal and beating them on the day in my view um, in in a manner maybe that Stoke sides have, haven't beat them in the past I think that's given us confidence and given us a real belief that we can have a good season and get into that top 10 which we want to do consistently but It's all positive, something you've got more points than you have yeah, season. and uh, your away record is arguably slightly better than Palace's home record. So it's an opportunity for an upset there. Well, yeah, I think uh, Palace play in a certain way. I think the threats they've got, they've got a good pace and good ability in wide areas. They like to get it out wide and uh, they can counter attack. So um, at times they'll, they'll invite you on and, and try and suck you in so that they can hit you on the break with the, the quality that they have. So we have to be mindful of that, but um, we we have similar weapons as well. I, I would suggest that we, we have opportunities to, to break quickly as well if the opposition gives us time and space to do that. We've, we've found um, at home against teams in, in the bottom half uh, a little bit more difficult to overcome because it's difficult to to get them to come out and, and attack us, but uh, Palace will attack us. They've got good threats, so maybe we can use that to our, our benefit. Thanks, okay, thanks, guys. Thank you very much.